Illinois, Matthew Malcolm with California Dairy Magazine reporting to you from the inaugural California Dairy Summit here in Sacramento at the Convention Center. Uh, we've got a, a great lineup of industry speakers. We've heard a lot of talk about environment and how we can improve those conditions within the dairy industry and do our part from the dairy industry perspective. Um, one of the speakers is er Hermes Cabrab from the UC Davis Department of Animal Science who's working on a key project using seaweed and other feed additives to reduce methane emissions. And I was hoping you could you know, talk about that a little bit and tell us what the progress is. Absolutely. So uh, we've been using uh, seaweed, particularly Asparagopsis taxiformis and Asparagopsis armata. These are the two types of seaweed that uh, contain bromoform, which is the, the active ingredient that helps reduce methane emissions in, in dairy cows or, or in any ruminants. So what we've done at UC Davis is we use the, the seaweed and, and we give them at two different levels. So at a half a percent of the total diet and at one percent of the total diet. And then we, we, we measure the emissions, mostly the enteric emissions, and see how much is, it, it can reduce it. And what we found is that if we use about half a percent of the seaweed in the cow's diet, the reduction was about 20-25%, uh, and when we increased it to 1%, it, it went up to 58% reduction in terms of the amount of methane that's been produced. So that's that's really a great uh, result, and it has a, a lot of potential, but I have to say that at, when we go higher at 1%, the, the intake, the, the, the dry matter intake went down as well. Uh, so we are working on uh, with the best, best way to try to deliver the, the, the seaweed. And we used uh, a seaweed that is not the most potent one in terms of reducing methane emissions. So we use a, a species called Asparagopsis armata. However, if we were to use Asparagopsis taxiformis, which we are planning to do uh, in the next phase, we could actually go down to maybe a quarter of a percent. And at that level, there, there won't be any effect in terms of intake or production, anything like that. So the first uh, work that we've done is just basically to show that this stuff work or not, because this is the first anywhere in the world that was done on, on dairy cattle. Uh, so far, mostly was done on vitro, so in, in the lab, and in the lab, it actually reduced like 90%, over 90% in some cases. So we wanted to see if this actually works in vivo, because there's a number of things that work in vitro does not necessarily mean they work in, in, in vivo when you do it with, with animals. So this is, this is really a, a good result of, uh, for us. And so the next step is that we're going to be using the, the more potent one, Asparagopsis taxiformis, and see we can reduce the, the level that we are, we are adding I, I, into the diet and we are also planning to study a long-term trial so we're going to be doing this for like six months uh, to begin with we're going to be doing with beef cattle because uh, the facility that we have we, we have much more ability to work with with beef cattle so we're going to be feeding them for like for six months and then we're going to be doing a lot of work in terms of animal health and, uh, and productivity so we'll measure body weight gain every week We'll be uh, taking samples and we'll be doing ultrasound, we'll be doing taste panels. We're going to have 120 people to, so to make sure that the, the meat uh, does not compromise the taste. Uh, we're going to be looking at any issues on liver abscesses or rumen abscesses or anything like that. So we're going to have a very detailed study uh, coming up to try to understand more. Uh, so at the moment I say it's at its infancy. Uh, we're, still, we're still learning a lot. We have actually more questions than, than answers at the moment. But this is the first study ever. So I'm hoping that there'll be other people that are interested in this. They will do more work. So maybe within the next two or three years, we could get up to five, ten different studies. And then we can learn from each other. And hopefully we can come to a solution that would help California dairy farmers reduce emissions. And hopefully will also improve uh, productivity as well. Right, so this is going to be very beneficial if, if it works, all, works out well and it's, it's practical, economical. Uh, this could really help with the impossible, nearly impossible uh, legislation that's come down demanding us to reduce our, our emissions. This is a step in the right direction. shows that, that we are working on it and we're doing our best. So uh, read more about these things and how it progresses in California Dairy Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.